Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the Ultra Act, Ultraman Dark, and Ultra 7 Dark set. These two Ultras are web exclusives in one set and was not made available to the US market. With such rarity and a very high price tag, surely this set is without flaws and one of the best Ultra Act releases of all time. Right? Well, let's take a look and see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. In the looks department, simply put, you're buying a black and red, Ultraman and Ultra 7. At a glance, the designs look really nice and well executed in the Ultra Act format. However, upon close inspection, you can find some quality issues on these two. And the fact the mold lines don't exactly match the paint jobs may bother some. Regardless, in terms of looks, these two are still pretty cool. I'll start with Ultraman Dark's head. Those red, beady eyes and dark silver paint just look very, very menacing on the shelf. Moving down to the chest, you can see what I was talking about earlier in regards to the mold. The reason that these lines are here is that those are guidelines for the paint for Ultraman. And since both Ultraman Dark and Ultra 7 Dark are just repaints of their normal counterpart, it's expected that mold lines like these would show up, but still you would think that maybe they could use different parts from other Ultras to sort of get around this small issue. These spots are also found on other parts of the body. Other than that though in this area the paint looks relatively clean and the color timer there is pretty nifty and depending on how it catches the light, it's very shiny. A look at the arms where you can see the marks again, specifically on the bicep right there, where a technical swivel would be. Also, if you look really close, you can see that there are production markings on this guy. So those of you who don't really care for that, yeah, you're not going to like this figure. Because, well, they're relatively obvious considering I think this is the fifth or sixth time Bandai has used this mold. But aside from that, the paint markings on the arms for Ultraman Dark, they're pretty clean. The thighs have pretty clean paint for the most part, and you can see the cut mark here up on the top of the thigh for the paint markings for the original Ultraman. Unfortunately though for mine right up here there's a stray black mark. Ho oh, hum. From the knees down on the legs they look pretty solid but I'd like to specifically call attention to the back of the legs here where you can see they did a nice job of matching the paint on the joints. That's pretty impressive I think. Moving on to Ultra 7 Dark the head looks very nice. The translucent plastic for the eyes is killer, and the green paint on the forehead is surprisingly very clean. Focusing in on the chest piece specifically, you can tell it looks very nice, and from where I'm looking at it, the gold in the grooves is clean enough to be considered perfect. The arms look pretty nice too and feature the same level of great paint application. Here's where the pretty simplistic paint of this Ultra 7 gets... er... Not exactly great. The red paint has little grooves all throughout Ultra 7 Dark here as a guiding point, and you would expect the paint to be as close to perfectly aligned as it could be given these grooves are here. Sadly, it's almost as if the paint is off just by a few millimeters throughout Ultra 7 Dark to be bothersome under close inspection because it doesn't fill the lines perfectly enough, or in some spots it's clumpy or it goes out of the lines. Also, as you can sort of tell right here on the abdomen, it looks like there was a little fuzz that went floating in the factory and got caught in the red paint and decided to land on my Ultra 7 Dark. Here's a look at the legs where you can still see that the red paint is following the trend, where specifically on this side of the leg here, you can see there's a nice chunk of paint missing, and you can see on this side of the leg it looks like the paint is clumping up just a little bit, and the paint is indeed outside of the lines. Just a tad. And taking a look at the middle of my Ultra 7 Dark's back, you can see the paint does look a little clumpy in some spots. It does look like maybe there's another fuzz or two caught in there. And the paint, specifically up here on this side, it is unfortunately out of the little grooves made specifically for it. Overall, the paint on the two is a mixed bag. The look is sweet, but the execution on yours may vary. Generally speaking, any one particular issue on either of them could just simply be forgiven, but when added up for me, it really starts to become annoying. Given the web exclusive status, I expect 
at least as close to perfection as possible. Like I said, your mileage may vary, and maybe I got a dud, but overall, I like the look of these guys, just not the execution. Both Ultraman Dark and Ultra 7 Dark use the exact same mold as their normal counterparts, meaning that all of the body parts are identical, as well as the joints. So these two feature the exact same articulation as their normal counterparts, though I've noticed there's some quality difference. So let's begin with Ultraman Dark. The head is attached to the neck on a ball joint, allowing you to turn the head around. You can look around, yada yada yada, you know how that works. The neck is attached into the body on a ball joint. Now, here's where the quality difference comes into effect here. Be careful turning the head. You might see there's a little bit of a reflection here. That's because my Ultraman Dark's head split in half because it wasn't glued properly. And I discovered that turning it from side to side separated it. So be careful there with yours. Shoulders, connected to the body on a ball joint. So you're gonna be able to spin the arms around as you would normally expect. There's a hinge involved so you can raise and lower the arms or push them forward or back like so. You have a bicep swivel as you would come to expect. Allows you to spin the arm around. As you can see there. Elbows, double hinge. Nice range of movement. Wrists, that ball, hinge, or double swivel combo. As you can see here, spin it around. And the hands are once again attached on that weird, not a ball joint, but a ball joint peg. So you're going to be able to get them to swivel around like so, and you're going to be able to get just a little bit of a rocking motion, though mine is not wanting to do that at the moment. Moving to the main body of Ultraman Dark, you have the ab crunch here, which is on a ball joint. allows you to rock Ultraman's upper part of his body around, like so. You twist it and turn it. And then you have a waist joint, which is on a ball joint. It's pretty sweet. Now, moving down to the legs. This was almost a disaster for me, and it may be for you too, so pay close attention. You have the hips plug into the thighs on a ball joint. As you can see here, very tight. They're putting up a lot more force than they may seem. And then in the crotch, you have hinges, which allow you to pull the thighs down, or the hips down to be technical, like so. So this way you can get a greater range of movement out of the legs. Now, this pull-down hinge on mine was super tight out of the box. I thought I was going to snap it. And I do have a remedy for this on how to loosen joints, and I have a video of that up on my channel. So if you have anything that's too tight on your Ultraman Dark or your Ultra 7 Dark, be sure to check that out. Now, where the ball joint plugs into the thigh, you have a little bit of a swivel. So you can see there, you can turn the leg like so. And then moving down, you have hinge knees, double hinge to be exact, tight on mine really doesn't want to move. Ankles, same sort of joints for the wrist. You can hear it, whoa, squeaking. And then you have a swivel here, which allows for the ankle rocker. As you can see, mine wants to come off for some reason. And then toes feature a hinge, which allows the toe to move up, but not really down. Moving on to Ultra 7 Dark, you have the basic articulation scheme of all Ultra Acts. First and foremost, you have the head attached to the neck on a ball joint, and you have some swivels and hinges in there, allowing you to basically move the head around in any direction you would like. And the fact that the neck is connected into the body on a ball joint allows for a pretty much perfect range of movement. There's really no restrictions to this either, so you're going to be able to get Ultra 7 Dark's head to move around in any direction you want. Moving down to the shoulders, they're attached into the body on a ball joint, as you can see here, you can spin them around. Unfortunately, the right shoulder on mine was super tight. And moving it around, it sounded like a Reveltech joint clicking. And considering it's a ball joint and not a Reveltech joint, that's not a good thing. So, once again, I had to use the dish soap technique from my How to Loosen Joints video to make sure that that was all fine and dandy. And you also have a hinge in the shoulder, allowing you to move the arms up and down, 
or forward and back, depending on how you look at things. You can move Ultra 7 Dark's arms up about that far because you have this shoulder armor here, which runs into the chest armor. And unfortunately, that does block the arm articulation just a little bit here. As you can see, the arms can't really go that close together. But luckily, when you get to the accessories, Tamashii Nation thought of this. Moving down from there, we have a double hinge in the elbow. As you can see here, great range of movement, no restrictions, a little bit of resistance, but that's okay. Same for both, as you can see here. The wrists are on that double swivel or ball hinge combo, whatever you would prefer to call it. So you get some pretty nice movement. And then the hands are attached to the wrist on that same sort of ball joint peg that Ultraman uses. As you can see here, it's not a full ball joint, but it's close enough. So you're going to be able to get just a little bit of movement out of the hands by themselves if you want to move them. Continuing on with the articulation, you have the ab crunch here, which is on a ball joint. It's a little tight on mine. It can be difficult to move. i got to put forth a little effort, but still, it's nothing too worrisome, but it might be tighter on yours. And then there is a ball joint in the waist, which is relatively tight. I don't. I can't tell if it's actually tight or it's just restricted because, unfortunately, I don't actually have Ultra 7 yet. So I don't really have a good frame of reference to compare that to. But still, if you're going to need Ultra 7 Dark to be in a specific pose for the main body, you're going to be able to get it just fine. Moving down from there to the hips. Ball joint. As you would imagine. And in the crotch, there is a pull-down hinge like you would expect from a Figu Arts or Ultra Act, and then the ball joint plugs into the thigh on a swivel. So as you can see there, there's a swivel and ball joint there, so you're going to be able to get the legs to move perfectly. Now, unfortunately, that is about as far out as Ultra 7 Dark's legs will go, so if you're looking for him to take the splits, well, you're not really going to be able to do that too well. But he can do that, which is pretty cool. Continuing down the legs, we have a double hinge for the knee, which is a little bit tight on the left one, but relatively loose for the right. So, great range of movement there. No real complaints aside from that. The ankles use the same sort of joint the wrists use, and that it's double swivel or ball hinge. But unfortunately, because of the sculpt, Ultra 7 Dark's ankles don't move too well. That's about as much as you're going to get forward and back. There is... A swivel built in there, a peg, which will allow you to get the ankle rocker movement, but again, because of the sculpt, it's not too, too great as compared to, say, Ultraman Dark in this set. And then moving on, we have toe articulation, which would be a hinge, which allows you to move the toe up and down, like so. So, as you can see, like I said, the articulation is identical to their normal counterparts, except for some joints are a little bit too loose, while others are too tight. I don't know if this is a quality control nightmare on my end, but it does make me uncomfortable that I do have to fix issues on a very, very limited production run action figure set. This set pretty much comes with everything you would need for these two. First up, to just get it out of the way, in the middle of both of the Ultras back, you'll notice that there is this little piece of plastic which you can just pop off very easily. And in the tray, you get these two replacement parts. These replacement parts are so you can plug a Tamashi Stage Act support arm into their back without having to use a claw. And they're sort of a pain to go in, but once they're in, they'll stay. you notice there are holes now. So all you have to do is just take the support arm, plug them in, and you're good to go. Also, if you would really need to, you can remove these parts up on the top of their backs. So this way, if you want to plug in a brother's mantle, you could do so. But I don't know why you would. Moving on to the actual accessories here, I'll start with Ultraman Dark. You get, aside from just the closed fists, splayed hands, sort of splayed hands, and karate chopping hands. And swapping these hands is very easy to do. But for you, it may take a little bit of effort like it does me. All you have to do is grab the currently attached hand and pop it off. From there, you take the hand you want to attach and you just line it up with the wrist peg. And see, mine requires effort, 
but my normal Ultraman doesn't require too, too much effort. And got to work it on. And there you go. Now you've swapped hands for your Ultraman. Now, what Ultra would be complete without some effect parts? First up, we have Ultraman Dark's Specium Ray, as you can see here. It's a nice dark purple color with some purplish whitish flare right here where it comes out of the hand. It's pretty nicely done. It's a nice translucent plastic with minimal paint application. And popping this on Ultraman is super easy to do. It's just like changing a hand. Once you pop the hand off, line up the hand on the Specium Ray, put the peg on the wrist, like so, and then once you've got it popped on, all you gotta do is pose him, and now he's ready to kill something. But this isn't the only effect part you get with Ultraman Dark. You also get his Ultra Slash, which is pretty sweet. It looks like a nice dark cherry color for the translucent plastic, as you can see here. Really no paint application on this one at all, but that's okay. And just like the Specium Ray, it's super easy to pop on. Again, with the hand popped off, all you gotta do is line up the hand attached to the slash, pop it onto the wrist, and there you go. Now he's ready to throw his attack. And that's pretty much everything that comes with Ultraman Dark. Now let's take on the next Ultra. So, Ultra 7 comes with four sets of hands aside from the closed fists. You have sort of slightly open fists to allow him to hold the eye slugger. You have the set of hands where it looks like he's using the Amerium beam. You have chopping hands, and then you have splayed hands. Swapping the hands out is super easy to do. Take the current hand attached to Ultra 7 Dark, grip it, pop it off the peg, take the new hand, line it up with the peg, just work it on nice and easy. And there you go. The new hand is attached. Continuing with the accessories, as I said in the articulation section, you'll notice that the chest armor for Ultra 7 Dark eh, it blocks the articulation a little bit. Luckily, as I said, Bandai thought of a way to get around this, and it is a swappable part. Now you have to be careful because it is held in very tightly on the pegs, but you have one peg near both shoulders. You just gotta work ever so carefully and you can pop it out, like so. And then you have a peg in the center of the chest where the traditional color timer would be. And you get this one, which is ruffled up a little bit. And you just plug it in the center of the chest, and then near the shoulders, on the back, it can be a little bit difficult because it's a rather rigid piece of plastic, but once you get it in, it'll be fine. And like that, the range of articulation for Ultra 7 Dark's arms is increased just a little bit, and it's just enough to use some of the effect parts effectively. Before I move on to the effect parts, though, I want to cover a weapon Ultra 7 Dark comes with, and that would be the Eye Slugger. So, fans of Ultra 7 will know that this little crest or blade on the top of his head comes off. Like so. And you also get a replacement one, which is a little bit larger in size, as you can see here. And you can just simply slide this into the slightly splayed open fist that Ultra 7 Dark comes with, just by sliding it into his hand, like so. And now he has a weapon to use. Now, if you have the effect part for Ultra 7's Eye Slugger, the little slash that it comes with, it can be used for Ultra 7 Dark here. And if you really want to, you can put it in his hand both ways. Now, this isn't the only attack Ultra 7 Dark comes with. Aside from the Eye Slugger, you also get this nice variant of the wide shot here. It's pretty cool. It's a nice dark blue translucent plastic with some black highlights here and there and there's a little bit of white paint here where it comes bursting out of the hand and attaching this onto Ultra 7 Dark is super easy to do. All you need to do is pop the right hand off of Ultra 7 Dark and then pop the hand for the wide shot onto the peg like so and there we go and now Ultra 7 Dark's ready to blow some stuff up but there's still more with this guy. 
you also get Ultra 7 Dark's Emerium Beam. As you can see here, it's a nice translucent green plastic with minimal paint applications, and it looks very, very nice. And attaching it is rather easy to do in theory, but depending on your coordination, it can be a real pain. Because it requires two hands, and you have to line them up with the green dot on Ultra 7 Dark's head. So you got one hand attached there, and then you pop the other hand on, like so, and then you line it up, and there you go. Now he can fire stuff out of his forehead. But wait, that's not all. This set also comes with the Amerium Beam for the normal Ultra 7 too. And as you can see here, yes, the plastic is somewhat translucent, but um, kind of looks more like a tinkle than an energy effect. But anyway, using it is exactly the same as you would with Ultra 7 Dark. Unfortunately, at this point in time, I don't have the normal Ultra Act Ultra 7 Renewal. But once I get him, I will show you how to use it, and I'll include a link right down there to the review. So like I said, this set comes with pretty much everything you would need for an Ultraman Dark and an Ultra 7 Dark. There are plenty of option parts to express your creativity and make some awesome scenes with. These two should not be throwing you any curveballs in terms of sizing. They are your typical 6 inch Ultras. First up alongside two of NECA's Jaegers and NECA's Battle Damage Knife Head and Leather Back. And last from NECA, their 1984 and 2014 Godzillas. Moving on to Tamashi Nations, here's Ultraman Dark and Ultra 7 Dark next to a few SH Monster Arts some Ultra Act Kaiju, and finally, some other Ultras. So, as you can clearly see, if you already have a spot set aside for these two Dark Ultras, chances are you'll be able to fit them in nice and easy. So, buy the set now, skip it, or wait for a deal. They both use the same mold as their normal counterparts, so the sculpt's pretty nice, though may be a bit beefy for some. Paint-wise, there are some imperfections which some will dismiss or be very upset over. Articulation is pretty solid, though some joints are dangerously tight or just a little bit too loose. And this isn't an isolated incident, just to mine. Multiple people have reported that this set has some joint issues, to say the least, and it's a shame because, well, black Ultra Act joints are very difficult to come by for replacements. Accessories? You have pretty much all you need with this set. Overall, this set is pretty good, but not perfect. Flaws aplenty, you have to really like this set from what you're seeing to pick it up. I like this set because of the rather limited number of Ultra Act bad guys, and I love the color schemes. But in the technical production sense, it isn't winning any awards. I can only give a solid recommendation to those who are completionists or those who specifically love these two Dark Ultras.